Hey there again folks, welcome back to my let's play of Ever 17, The Out of Infinity. We are continuing to go through uh, Takshi's route, and we're about to the end now. Uh, West Ham Coco got sick of this again. Um, they're rushing her to Himmel. So now we're going to see how this all pans out. Uh, now we haven't asked you what to do here, so... What do we do? <laughs> no. Uh, you the character. Hey you, uh, is there any way to get around this lock that you know of? Huh? Where'd you go? <laughs> eh? Turning toward the voice coming from behind a few yards away, I saw you throw down the first aid kit she'd been carrying. Huh? Ah! <laughs> She immediately came hurtling toward me as if possessed. Ah, uh, battle faced you. She looks furious. I stumbled back away from the door. With a perfect flying drop kick, she threw open the panel to the electric lock. What are you doing? This isn't time to be goofing off. You shouted as she leaned over Penny. That's a little extreme. Well, how about it? Does it look like it's going to open? Neither the door nor the panel had changed at all. You begin hitting the lock with a re renewed vigor, uh, uttering strange noises. But all the lock did was make an error sound and ask politely for her to re-enter her password. Is that what they call passive resistance? Even though you're assaulting me, please just re-enter your password. <laughs> In the end, you ended up with a sprained finger and went back to the first aid kit. Next, uh, now that sprained finger would be interesting if that had a result on the ending. Uh, so if, if her dexterity was absolutely required and she failed because of that sprained finger. Who actually did, who actually gets the door open here? Is it Gumi? Or is it Sora? Or was it anybody? I... Hmm. The last time we, uh, We're gonna be able to retrace our steps easily from this point on. Please give this due consideration. We can't go back. We gotta make a decision. I guess we. Ha I guess we're gonna wait just a sec. Hey, wait just a second. As soon as I said that, so give me glared needles at me. Needles projected from my eyeballs and hit me in the face. No, that's not it. If we're going to spend an hour stuffed into that little room, I just want to make sure everybody was ready. You know, check to see if anyone had to go to the bathroom. Did y'all bring your toothbrushes, Mom? Uh, did you pack a spare pair of socks? Oh my gosh! Brush your teeth, taking a shower. Oh, he's, he's really, he's actually really making fun of himself, okay. If you're going to bring a snack, make sure it's reasonable. <sighs> <sighs> Takashi. I heard two rather large sighs. Especially with Coco laying there dying or whatever. I'm doing I mentioned it because it's a let's play of a fake with fake people. 
それより急ぎましょう Seems that everyone was tired of my jokes. I just wanted to put everyone at ease. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. So let's get moving then. When I said this again, you, the kid, Sugumi, Sora, PP, all nodded in unison. The kid and you held the unconscious Coco between them. Sugumi now picked up the researcher and PP took up the rear. Everyone lined up at the trans transparent sliding door on the far side of the room. Sora used the control panel on the terminal to open it up. And uh, for now, it's going to be all stuff from the last time. I'm sure it will start to be quite different pretty soon. I'm thinking once it stops, I'm going to read on till the end. Surely, surely this will be a different ending. Uh, I did it as opposite as I could. I mean, I made every choice that I didn't last time, so... That'll be a different ending, surely. And the researcher is dead. Okay, who with the sad music. So the sad music happened last time. We were quickly approaching the earliest estimated time for Lemu's implosion. It was almost May the 6th, 4.30 p.m. A few more hours later, we tried everything. There was nothing we, uh, there was nothing we, nothing else we could do to get out of here. There was no pass left for us to take. Hit by that reality, all of, the, all of my remaining strength drained away. All I could do was watch the seconds on the clock slip by. Okay, the kid did get sick. Yeah, he did get sick last time. Okay. I guess he always gets sick. In this, in Takashi's path. The kid's condition had gotten worse and he was sleeping in a capsule pod. We tried contacting the outside using the communication lines, but nothing had changed since we were at Limu. All sonic and electrical communications were down. <clears throat> Every once in a while, static would come through the receiver from the outside, which meant that the lines were functioning, but the computer's communication software wasn't working. We had been trapped here by the leaked pharmaceuticals to hide the existence of IBF and its records from the outside world. Our reality was a nightmare. How I wished that it all had only been a long dream. Thinking that, I closed my eyes slowly. Try minutem, further implosion. An, uh, an announcement graded mechanically from the room speakers. I could hear sharp metallic sounds echoing from somewhere. The walls creaked ominously and the floor shook. Skimmy looked at the ceiling and murmured this. Started? Finished. I looked up at the ceiling and I couldn't see anything. The heavy reverberations were coming from somewhere far away in the water. Skimmy let these words fall from her lips without any expression. From her spot on the floor, you raised her head feebly. Skimmy stood unsteadily. She dragged her right leg. Skimmy, what happened to your leg? Skimmy looked at her leg as if, if it was the first time that she had noticed. Why minute then? Further implosion.
Dragging her leg, Sugumi hobbled toward the door. Sugumi! Wait! I tried to chase after her, but tripped awkwardly. My hand hit the floor, and when I tried to stand, I fell to the floor again. My legs wouldn't move as I wanted. Sprawled out on the floor, my whole body was numb and I couldn't move. What's, what's happening to me? <coughs> I started coughing suddenly and put my hand to my mouth. Removing it slowly, I noticed my palm was sticky with blood. Sugumi, wh where are you going? My vision began to grow dim. The distance separating us became distorted. Sa Sugumi tilted her head. She opened up the flood hatch and went into the firmary. Her outline seemed to flicker faintly. As Skibby walked down the hallway, I lost sight of her. She closed the hatch from the outside. <clears throat> she turned the handle so I knew the door was sealed. In that instant, I heard the terrible roar of water from the passageway on the other side of the wall. The watertight hatch groaned and buckled under the tremendous force of the water, but somehow withstood the pressure. Sugumi! Sugumi! The alarm from the pod's control panel started shrieking a high-pitched warning. I turned my head to look over at the source of the noise. The vital signs, which should have been displayed on the monitor, were no longer moving. Kid, no. The alarm wouldn't stop. Its cold, flat tone drowned out the silence. But thanks for not being in the game, though. I do appreciate that. The lines weren't moving. No heartbeat. No breathing. Nothing. Lying flat on the floor, you started sobbing. The terrible roaring from overhead gradually became louder. It seemed as if the whole floor were trembling. Ignoring the complaints from my body, I used the rest of my strength to pull myself close to you. <coughs> I'm, I'm here. The floor was wet with blood. I somehow slid my arm over to her. Both of you's hands took my right hand, closing around it gently. Her small hands were icy cold. You came crawling over to me, pulling closer the hand in her grasp. She hugged my hand close and held it to her chest. Squeezing it closely, firmly. The palm of my hand covered her chest. Eve's <laughs> body was starting to shake. I could tell from my hand pressed against her that she was rapidly losing energy. Her skin and clothes were freezing cold. The only place where warmth remained was her chest, where our hands were touching. Yu's heart was beating so hard it felt like it would explode.
Her voice was getting hoarse, and she was having trouble breathing. I couldn't move anymore either. I tried to breathe to comfort her, but all that came from my mouth were red drops of blood. Extending my fingers toward you, I ran them over her body to check if she was still alive. Her whole body was racked with spasms. The frame bent, twitching backward. But soon, even her shaking became weaker. She, be she, became <clears throat> she became colder and colder with each passing moment. Only her heart remained beating ferociously. It sounded far away as though it could almost be my imagination. Her voice was devoid of strength. A single tear flowed, uh, followed these words. Yi's heart made one last frantic burst. And after that, I heard nothing. The warmth of her hand was totally gone. Was she gonna say, what, him? Ah, she likes the kid and him. How uh, complicated this game is. I guess they had less interaction this time around because playing is toxic. Beating of her heart lost forever. In that moment, my vision went red. Panicking, I wiped my face with my hands. Red. Everything was red. I couldn't see anything. All I could feel was slippery warmth. My face was pressed into the floor so hard that I thought it would become part of it. My breathing had stopped. I couldn't move. I couldn't support myself. The floor was cold and hard. My body stiffened and became cold as well. My consci consciousness faded, disappearing. And from somewhere, the crackling sounds of the communication lines faded away. That was the last sound I heard. Past tense. Ooh. Now that was the, uh, when I played this before, that was the ending, I believe, I, I'm pretty sure I got. So there's not an end yet, because you are in the infin infinity loop. Yes, please save it. Oh, they don't even give you no credits at that time. Oh wait, um, you know what, let's go to this. Clear list. Three endings. This part is confusing to me. It says 53 out of 114%. The scene's completed 77 out of 126. Kind of confuses me. Fast completed 116. Scoomy, Sora, version bad. I'm just curious about something. I'm going to uh, pick the last one. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, that's why I was so surprised when. Uh... Okay, I guess I have to go through two of them. Yeah, that's why I was really surprised when. Uh... When it was actually a relatively good uh, ending last time. 
Because I expected that that's what had to happen, that, uh, Takashi and them had to, uh, that Takashi had to, you know, die. I mean, well, actually, he had to die the other time, too. Now she can't catch no break. Takashi should just, should just chill. He should just be like, you know what, everybody just make all the decisions for me. Because when I make decisions, I die. <laughs> uh, when the kid, you know, is in charge, then everybody lives. <laughs> I highly doubt it. Him, uh, I'm just curious if this is, if uh, choosing to go right ahead makes a difference. I don't think it will, but just thought I'd test it for science. Um... Yeah, that was the ending that I got the first time I played it, which is why I was really surprised when it was a relatively happy ending with him and Sugimi last time. Is that when they put the kid in there? Yeah, that's right. Hmm. No, the kid was just in there. I mean, the kid was, uh... Okay, yeah, it's all the same. All the same. Sad, depressing music. I like the music in this game, for the most part. I don't think that's something I've mentioned too much, but yeah, the music's pretty good. Yeah, there's nothing different based on that one decision. I didn't think there would be. I thought I'd check. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause it here, and I'm going to just, I think I'm going to go back to uh, to uh, one of my first ones, uh, see what happens. Alright, yeah, I loaded up uh, one of my last saves, uh, not last saves, but actually my, one of my first saves, I guess you could say. I did the, uh, this one right here, from, from September the 6th. Great Scott. Uh, but this was uh, the last episode of uh, Talk She's Root. And uh, I know that you can hit. I, I was told that you can hit Sora's Root. Pretty ending. Uh, uh, you know, pretty easily, you know, using your past save. So that's what I'm going to go for. And he's uh, going through with chicken sandwiches, delivering them. So uh, I pushed open the door and it slid open. This is all going to be... Oh, this is different. Good. Sora, are you in here? I called her her name, but I got no response. The console was silent. Was silent. The control, the control panel was... Actually, I just lost track of what I was saying. Oh. Console was silent. Okay. That's strange. I wonder if this means she finished checking the sensor data. If that was the case, I thought she would report back to us. Sora, where are you? Hey, Sora! Expected to find her hiding in the corner somewhere. That's what holograms do. They hide in corners. I called out for her again, but I still got no response. Next, I touched the terminal. Although I didn't know how to operate it, it seemed to be responding. A map of Lemu data suddenly appeared on the Lemu monitor, but it didn't tell me anything. There was still no sign of Sora. I decided to check somewhere else. I headed for the second floor. Oh, hey, that's showing nothing, huh? Maybe the order you do these in are imp uh, is important. Infirmary. Who's in the infirmary? Turning down the corridor after climbing the emergency stairs, I came out in front of the infirmary. Huh? The door abruptly opened in my face and a person came flying out and then dodged right past me. In a flash, the figure was gone without even seeming to notice me. Who was that? I whipped around quickly, trying to see who the person was. It was Sagumi. Okay, now it's all different. Okay, I figured this is mostly going to be the same, so. Pausing. Pausing.
you know what? On second thought, I guess I, I guess this is as good a place to end it as any. Um, I will let it keep doing this until it comes to a uh, to a multiple choice uh, question, and then I will uh, save it, and that's where the next episode will pick up at. So. As always, I hope you all enjoyed, and I shall return for the next one. Farewell, folks. <laughs>